let's talk luxury makeup that I don't hear anybody else talking about. Hello everybody, Sean here. I have a box of really bougie Burberry items. And my experience with Burberry is pretty limited, truth be told. I did have a Burberry bronzer that I used for the longest time. I don't have any idea where it is. <laughs> it's maybe in a drawer or in a purse or overnight bag or something, but I loved it. And then I had a Burberry lipstick that I really loved as well. It was like the perfect nudie pink shade, right? My only other experience with Burberry is when my husband and I were in London a few years ago, we had stopped by and we're looking in the window of the Burberry store in London and the sales gal was like, hey, come on inside, I'll give you a private tour. So we got to see like the showroom and all the latest collection and it was really fun and we felt like we were completely out of our element. I've never actually purchased anything clothing wise Burberry. I don't have a Burberry scarf or Burberry purse. It'd be fun to have one, but there's also so many knockoffs out there, like so many inspired by Burberry type print scarves and things like that. A little while ago, another, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago, I had received an email from Nordstrom Rack Beauty saying that there was all this Burberry beauty items going on sale. And so I thought, you know what? Now's the time. Now's the time while well, things are not full price to try out a bunch of products. And I think I might have like a face full. So let me get this organized here really quick. And then we'll just start applying some products. Give me just a second. Okay. I've got it all laid out in front of me. I see that I don't have a primer. We're going to use a Tarte Timeless primer. We're going to high end. Might as well do multiple high end things. I don't know if they didn't have a primer on their little sale. So sorry, it's not going to be, I guess primer can be technically considered skincare. So I'm breaking the rules with the non face ball. I will do my best to try to share with you guys everything that I use and I'll let you know if anything is not Burberry. So the first thing we're going to try is this foundation. This is a matte glow foundation. I picked shade medium neutral number 60. Fingers crossed. This is somewhat similar Pretty. You know what I love about this packaging? Look at that Burberry plaid right there on that. So nice. It's like a frosted glass bottle. Ooh, take the lid off. You've got a lot more product in there. I'm going to squirt some. Oh, okay. So I wasn't sure by looking at this, especially the base part, it seemed more light, but I think that might actually be a really good shade. We're going to just try a damp beauty sponge. I think that might be all right. Did I actually pick a foundation online that will look good? Would not be surprised. For fun, I'm starting with half my face just so that we can kind of gauge cover and color and things like that. Boy, it doesn't feel off. It feels more lightweight than I thought it was going to. It's not a full coverage foundation, I wouldn't say, because you can still see, you know, some dark under eye circles. Let's get a little closer here. You can still see some, a little bit of darkness down here, some spots showing through. As far as color goes, I'm not horribly upset by that. Shade wise alone. I'm really digging it. Light coverage, not the most opaque coverage. Okay. I actually don't see that it's like sitting on my skin. I'd be curious to see how this applies with either fingers or a brush. Maybe I'll do that on a later. I'll do that offline the next time I play with this stuff. So far so good. It feels lightweight. It feels soft on my skin. Zero issues, complaints about that at all. I do have this foundation stick, Fresh Glow Gel Stick, Luminous Foundation and Concealer. So I thought this might be a good concealer option. It's been a while since I've used stick foundation, but I used to really like them. And I was curious when it said it was a gel formula. This is in shade Warm Beige, Warm Beige number 28. I'm actually gonna grab a brush. This is the first time I kind of almost wish that I had done a color corrector. I don't normally use them. I've had a stressful week. Okay. I think it's applying too much when I use the brush. Like that spot covered up really, really well. I'm going to try a little bit on my finger and see what that looks like. Okay. I think I actually maybe like applying it with my finger a little bit better than a brush. Good to know. Let's see if we go directly on these age spots. Okay. Apply it directly to the skin. You get a ton more coverage, full coverage from it. It feels uh, almost cooling on the skin, but almost like in a wet way. All right. I did not get an eyelid primer. So let me see what I've got here. I'm going to use the Gerard Cosmetics eyelid primer just because it's conveniently located and it's been very consistent for me. I'm kind of hit and miss on, on primers. If I try an eyeshadow 
and I'm like, wah, wah, like not sure if it's going to really work. Um, or I'm not thrilled by it on first application. I go back in and try it with an eyelid primer and maybe sometimes one or two different kinds just to make sure that it's not one of those formulas that it is really meant to be paired with something else. Gerard Cosmetics, this is their clean canvas eye base. I can tell you this, my face does not feel luminous at all. This actually feels very matte. Okay, so it doesn't say luminous, but it does say matte glow foundation, illuminating matte, illuminating matte foundation. Yeah. So I don't know if illuminating means supposed to be brightening or I would have think, thought it had a little bit of something to it. My face looks very flat right now, right? Let's try to warm it up a little bit. I did get a bronzer. Packaging's nice. It's like a thicker cardboard, but it's like textured, so it's not smooth and Oh, so pretty. Comes in this little velvet pouch with the Burberry sort of plaid on it. It's a, uh, the Burberry plaid on this little velvet pouch. Sorry, my nails, my nails have not been done lately. This looks very familiar to me. This is the same as that bronzer that I had before. It's a reflective metal case with the Burberry plaid on it. And it just, it feels luxury. It feels high end. And that's the shade that I picked up, which is shade Warm Glow number one. So I suspect this is going to be more of a bronzer and less of a contoury. Oh yeah, it's pretty, pretty orange. I couldn't really gauge how it was going to look based on the, the online visibility to it. The other bronzer that I had was a much cooler, almost darker, richer shade. I think most of the, the models that they had had this very clean, fresh sort of look. So this kind of goes along with that. It's more subtle, more of a subtle contour, almost like a blush or bronzer combination and not necessarily a contour bronzer or bronzering. Okay, I did get a blush though. I got two blushes because I couldn't decide. One of them is, they both say light glow on them. One of them says rose blush number eight. The other one says blossom brush, blossom blush. Oh, I can't say that. Number five. So let's let's take a look at these. This is the number five, I think. No velvet case on the. Oh no, there is. Sorry, it came off in the box. Another velvet case. Kind of fun. I don't know that I'll keep them on that because I'm pretty sure I'll get my fingerprints all over it. Um, but that's the. This is number five. So that's a much darker kind of rosy pink color. I've already got my fingerprints on these packages. Okay, again, comes in the little velvet sleeve. This is number three, a little softer, not quite as bold as the other one. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, that's pretty. It's a little early to declare, but this might actually be a good makeup day. I'm taking a little break in my work day to get this knocked out to you. I needed a break, my, I was getting stressed. I'm not gonna call this meditation, but I'm gonna call this uh, a break in the stress. That combination's not bad. Okay, I do have Fresh Glow Compact Ochre Nude Number no. Two Luminous Foundation. So I'm guessing this is like a powder foundation. Again, comes in the velvet pouch. Those are super fun. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those. They're just gonna get fingerprints and makeup on them. Again, the same um, same box. Now these are all roughly the same size. However, this seems like it's a little bit darker of a tint. I don't know if that's intentional or not. So what I mean by the same size is either the same size as the blush and the bronzer that I already showed you guys. Okay, so this, it, it could be a powder foundation. It does come with a little sponge applicator and a mirror, kind of like one of those clamshell type openings. It's pretty light. I'm gonna wait until the end and see what I might need a powder. I'm not gonna actually do any setting right now. I'm just gonna kind of, we're moving on. Okay, I do have four eyeshadows. I didn't see a palette, I saw singles. So I got four of them. One of them is Midnight Brown, uh, number 300. One of them is Khaki Green, 306. I have one in Taupe Brown, 302, and Nude, number two. So let's try Nude, number two first. I suspect this is gonna be a very simple, again, comes in a little pouch. This is a smaller compact, but it, done, it has the Burberry plaid on it. It's the only thing, I don't know why they would do this. This is one of those little applicators that all of a sudden just cheapened up this whole thing. But that looks like a light champagne color. I'm going to wait on that one because I think I want to do a single shade maybe. Let's just look at the rest of these. So that was, what did I say? That one? We're going to do these in number order. So that was number two. This is number 300. Again, with the velvet pouch. Maybe it's keeping it from being scratched. Okay. That color sure is pretty. That's almost like a rich 
almost looks like a mauve brown, but definitely a cool tone. That's really pretty. We're going to try 302. So that was 300. Now we're going to try 302. Again, same size. Nothing about the outside looks any different than the other one. This is 302. Okay, so darker, richer, definitely still on the cool tone. That might be a good like eye eyeliner type. And this is number 306. So we'll try this one. So pretty. Oh, okay. So definitely, definitely your green. Kind of a, I'm going to call it a, like a camouflage green, but definitely an olive green. I like olive greens. I don't know that it really goes with what I'm working today, wearing, wearing to work today. So we're going to actually try 300. 300 is going to be our initial transition shade. I'm scared. I literally know nothing about this, but I'm going to take a little bit on my brush. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, a little bit of kick up that I see flaring up into the air. Soft, cool shade, easy to apply, blending out very sheer if you work it. Wow. If you're a one and done minimalist, high end minimalist, this, this might be well worth taking, taking a look at. I probably just went too much on that one. Curious to see how it works with no eyelid primer at all, since I use that Gerard Cosmetics one. It does blend well, it also builds well, and it shears out. So, so far, I have zero regrets. That's exactly what I was looking for. And I think shearing it out actually does give me the transition shade or for a daytime look or a day look with glasses, I would choose that color just as a, an all over the lid. Something very, very simple. We're gonna take a oh, little, these little things are, are falling off. Like, I don't, I don't know why that's in there. We're gonna take this darker one on a little bit smaller of a brush. I'm gonna put it up against my lash line here to kind of darken this up. And then I'm gonna move it up into kind of that C shape here. The, the trick of giving your eyes some depth and maybe even appearing to have a little bit more real estate. Okay, that was significantly darker than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't think I'd picked up that much, but it's super pigmented. So let me grab my other brush and kind of just blend it out up here. I didn't put any more product on this brush. Um, it's whatever was left on it before. Okay, but it's blending out well. I'm fine with that. We're gonna lighten up the situation here. I'm gonna take that shimmer. I'm gonna use my finger this time. Hopefully that doesn't hard pan it. The formula doesn't feel as creamy as some of the other things maybe we've been seeing lately. It's actually very pretty on. I would say it's more of a cool toned champagne, almost like a silver background to it or taupe. I mean, I guess they called it taupe, so that makes sense. I would agree with that. I always go back over it with kind of like my crease brush just to kind of make sure I don't have it traveling too far up into that hooded eyelid because no, we don't. We don't want that. All right, I'm going to clean up a little bit of this. I didn't get a ton of fallout. If I use a brush that's slightly too big, I do end up having a little bit of cleaning up to do. I didn't do any eyebrows. Shoot, I didn't get any, did I? I have a, I have a ColourPop eyebrow. We're going to just do this really fast. Quick eyebrow. That's done. Okay, now that I got the color where it doesn't look patchy at all, I'm going to go back over it with a clean kind of fluffy brush here. And we're just going to kind of try to shear that out just a little bit so that it doesn't appear too heavy and dark. As far as cool tone eyeshadows go, those three are okay. I think my my favorite probably would be, I really liked 02 and I liked 300. I think uh, 302 might be a better eyeliner maybe. I don't know. I think for a daytime look is kind of what I'm going for. I'm excited to try this green one. I'm not going to do it today. Of the two eyeliners I picked up, one of them is chestnut brown and one of them is pale grape. Sorry, chestnut brown is 02, pale grape is 04. No, uh, no little sleeve. It comes in, which is fine. Um, it is very pretty though. It's kind of like that gunmetal gray, like the other packages, but without the plaid on it. So this is one of them. Let's see what this looks like. Feels like a gel or a coal. It is a dark, 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 rich plum, not light purple by any stretch of the imagination. Let's see what the chestnut brown looks like. Oh, this has a... So one of them came with a sharpener. That's cool. Okay, this says that it is an effortless, effortless blendable coal. Totally different than the purple. So, oh yeah, it's like a kind of a fatter sort of chubby stick. Let's see what this looks like. So the, the color is in pencil. And applying well. Okay. I am going to try to, it said it's blendable. So we're going to try to smudge that out a little bit on the bottom line. 
It's a little short and stubby, the crayon is. I'd be curious to see how long it lasts of use before I have to sharpen it again. I'm pleased that it comes with a sharpener. That's actually kind of cool. Let me grab a little firm brush here. This is a clean brush. We're just kind of smudging this out against the bottom lash line. It's probably a little thicker and darker than I would have preferred. So I definitely am doing this 90s supermodel, <laughs> 90s supermodel heavy eyeliner today, I guess. When they say coal, they, they mean coal. We're going to leave that the way it is. I am curious about this purple though. Should I put a little of the purple on too? I don't know where. All right. I just put a little of the purple on just to kind of tight line from where I ended with that coal liner. I'm not going all the way in because I already lose some of that real estate, but I think it gives a nice defined line to it. So that actually worked really well. All right. A little mascara. Let's try this one. This is called the Burberry Cat Lashes and it says Midnight Blonde 03. Packaging is beautiful. You got that same kind of gunmetal cap with the plaid on it, matte black component. It is a lighter brown, which is perfectly fine with me. Little hourglass, um, little hourglass spoolie wand. I did not curl my lashes. So let's try an eye without curling them. All right, you guys, if you prefer a softer approach to mascara, then this works perfectly fine. This seems to me like it's gonna be good for the no makeup makeup kind of days or the really soft kind of classy look without being like, bam, super aggressive, heavy, high impact eyes. I don't know if that helps you guys at all. I'll be curious to see how it performs after a couple days of being open. I did get a lip gloss. I think I had ordered a different lipstick and it had, um, it ran out before it actually shipped. This is a Burberry Kisses gloss in pink mist number 53 before I choose a lip liner. Okay. That's pretty bad. Let's look here. It's a pink tinge gloss that looks pretty darn sheer. I guess that kind of goes along with the whole minimalist look. I'm going to use this Morphe pencil and sweet tea. If you guys have been here ever before, this is one of my favorite sort of nude, normal, regular, everyday lip liners. So I lined my lips and then I just kind of did a little darker on the outside and kind of smudged it with my finger. I know dirty finger. So we're going to go over it with this gloss. It's a gloss. It doesn't feel too heavy. Okay. The applicator, it, you know, it's like your typical doe foot, but it's a, it's pretty flexible. And so I felt like it kind of pushed my lip liner around a little bit. I don't know if I'm describing that in a way that actually makes sense. We have one more product in the Burberry stuff that I purchased. Where did it go? The last thing is this ochre nude. It says it's a, a it's like a foundation, but it's a powder foundation. So I'm going to try a little bit this, which is like with a pencil brush, kind of where I get my glasses marks. If it is supposed to be a foundation, how does it cover? It actually has some, some, some coverage there. Okay. I mean, I don't know that I'm going to give up my bare minerals foundation. If I'm going to do a dry foundation, if I'm going to do a powder foundation, I like the smoky look, you guys, I think it goes with what I'm wearing today. It's maybe a little darker than I probably was expecting. Normally at the end of my makeup, I go back in and put on more blush, but I'm not even going to do that. Okay. Let me find a big fluffy brush here. I've got a big, that that's about as big and fluffy as it gets. I'm going to try a little bit of this. Now my face feels very matte. So if you already have dry skin, this might not be what you're looking for. Unless you are looking literally for a matte, no glow, no luminosity, no any of that. If that interests you, then, then this is probably the one for you. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of this concealer, this gel concealer stuff. And I'm going to put that right there. Kind of brightens that up just a little bit. It's a subtle way of doing inner, inner corner highlighting without doing anything too bright. And again, I didn't get anything that was going to work as inner corner highlight. I also didn't get a, a highlighter and I don't remember them. I don't remember seeing a highlighter, but man, for a simple, classy, kind of easy to use, I would absolutely do this again. I feel like, I feel like a million bucks right now. I need to set this down. Use a little hourglass. Soft Focus Setting Spray. 
This stuff is so fine. Okay, how does my skin look? Uh, pretty darn fabulous, you guys. Wow. I don't see any kind of... I don't, I'm not seeing any caking, pilling. It doesn't seem to be cleaning, clinging to any dry patches. Nothing like that. This was a complete win. Sometimes you don't know with the high-end stuff. Like, sometimes it's like, okay, is this going to be a complete waste of, waste of money? I'm, I'm excited to, to try the green eyeshadow. I'm going to use that tomorrow. I didn't have anything I didn't like. For one reason or another, I think everything works. If you came here looking for the tea, there you go. If you came here looking for negative reviews, I don't have anything to say. I'm glad I got this on sale at Nordstrom Rack as opposed to buying it off of Nordstrom's actual luxury counter. I'm, if you're going to try something, that's the way to do it. Until they open up testing and makeup counters where you can actually try things on or get your makeup done by somebody else, th this wasn't a bad way to do it. This feels high-end luxury. This is going to go right up there with my Pat McGrath and my Charlotte Tilbury, and it's going to have some little special box to put it in and to remember to myself to use it because life's short to not use good makeup. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. So if you are, if you're an existing subscriber, thank you guys so much. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button, ring the bell to get notified when I do upload usually two days a week, pretty consistent so far. Going to keep, going to keep trying to be consistent. So leave me a comment down below. Tell me, have you tried any of the Burberry makeup and what do you like? What do you not like? Is my impression the same as, as yours? I would love to hear from you guys. I hope you guys are doing really well. And until my next video, bye for now.